All right. Well, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. We are going to be talking about the manufacturing career cluster and the different program areas and opportunities career wise. Um, I'm Carrie Miller. I'm the Manitowoc County Youth Apprenticeship Coordinator. So hopefully some of you will be a familiar face to me. Um, just a quick reminder and plug that we do have our information meeting tonight. Uh, but this morning I want or this afternoon I want to introduce to you um, three individuals that are we're very grateful are taking the time today um, to talk to you about their careers and other careers that they work with. So first I'll introduce Eric Haven. Um, Eric is the apprenticeship manager at LDI or Lube Devices in Manitowoc. Next we have we have two Kyles today. Uh, Kyle Wiedemeyer is the engineering manager at Parker Hannafin. And then we have uh, Kyle Schlenker is the plant manager at Parker Hannafin. So we are gonna get started. I'm gonna have Eric Haven from LDI. He is going to talk first. Hey, thank you very much, Carrie. Uh, as, as Carrie stated, my name is Eric Haven with LDI Industries in Manitowoc. Um, I'm fortunate to be at LDI for the past 22 years. I started out as a youth apprentice in high school. I spent my junior and senior year um, up at Lincoln High School and working in the machinist program here at LDI. Uh, over, the, over the years, the YA program has grown significantly. Uh, upon graduation of my high school uh, diploma, I was offered a four-year registered, uh, registered adult apprenticeship program at LDI. The big benefit of the youth apprenticeship program is that you get credit towards the adult registered program. So I started in 2000, I completed it in 2004, uh, journeyman machinist. Um, 2004, I went back out to LTC, did my associate degree in supervisory management, um, took about three years. And then uh, since then, um, a backup leader, uh, apprenticeship manager, uh, journeyman machinist uh, in our automatic screw machine area. I've uh, been very fortunate over the past 20 years to work with probably 20 YAs uh, LDI currently has six registered apprentices um, in, the, in, the, in the adult program, and we currently have one YA uh, from Lincoln High School. Uh, certainly COVID and the times that we're in have, have uh, presented certain challenges uh, to all of our organizations. But one thing that has not wavered is the fact that we have a huge, um, a huge um, amount of baby boomers retiring. And these individuals want to pass their skill sets on to the next generation. So um, this is something that uh, all, all, for the majority of the local manufacturers are involved in, in apprenticeship, in YA, in training that next generation. Um, the opportunities are, are, very, are very large and very bright in these given areas. Um, so this is what I've been involved with. I've been very fortunate to be able to learn, mentor, and, and grow over the years. Um, the great thing about going from the YA to the RA is I've received about 1,000 hours of work hours credit towards the 8,000 hour registered adult program. Uh, LDI did also pay for my tuition and books during the apprenticeship program. Um, and so, and, and that's pretty customary now. Uh, that's, that's part of the adult degree learning kind of programs. So, um, so that, this is a program that um, LDI has been primarily in the machining area, but also um, some industrial maintenance, some welding, and also the engineering program. So um, we're a smaller company. Um, the interesting thing within, within the manufacturing area, when we look at different YA pathways that you can go into in different manufacturing opportunities, some are in a prototype, one-off type scenarios, um, low, low, low volume, low run jobs. Other ones are high volume production type jobs where you're setting up and, and, and operating. So every manufacturer kind of gets paid a little different um, based upon the products that they produce. Uh, but what, what we're all about is trying to develop that skill set, trying to provide that opportunity to young men and women that are going to be uh, juniors and, and seniors. And and hopefully they will want to stick in the in the uh, career pathway. So. Okay, Eric, do you want to fill us in a little bit about machining as a career? Um, what do sure. you, know, you typically do? Absolutely. Um, 
in within machining, um, we have half of our plant is more of a manual um, automatic screw machining type processes. The other half is it's CNC related. Um, most of our programming is done offline, although our setup and operators do do some minor uh, minor um, minor tweaks to that. Um, our setup and operators, the parts that we make are our own product lines. So generally they're, they're pretty, pretty proven, pretty repeatable, um, and, and we're not a job shop. Uh, there are some manufacturers out there, all they do is subcontract work for other companies. We have our own internal product lines. Um, with, with more of a manual machining, you're actually having to go in and manually adjust tooling and setting speeds and feeds and changing out, um, changing out collets and, 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 and so on. Uh, with the CNC side of it, it's a little bit less hands-on, uh, but then again, that's a little different skill set too, and a little different pay grade. Um, but uh, there's there's tremendous opportunities in learning the basics, and by going out to LTC, by getting the blueprint reading, some of the math, some of the mills and and and, and lays really gets that good foundation there. And once you learn that skill set, especially in screw machine area. Um, CNC, uh, industrial maintenance, once you learn, and some of the maintenance uh, techs have really done well by learning on the floor, understanding how the machines operate, and then working their way into a support function. So. Great, thanks. I'm going to pass it over to Parker and Kyle. Kyle Schlenker. Yeah, okay, thank you. So I'm going to share uh is is it possible to share anything carrie can we can we share something yes you bet. i'm just switching it right now there you go thank you all right we'll see if we can okay Good. So welcome. My name is Kyle Schlenker. I'm the plant manager here at uh, Parker Hannafin. Uh, we have two locations here in Manitowoc. Uh, the location that Kyle and I work at is on 24th Street by the airport. And uh, just have a few slides. want to share a little bit about Parker. Uh, I'll share a little bit about my career and background. And then Kyle's got um, a little bit more to share from the engineering world and, and what he's responsible for. So um, some of you may have heard of Parker or know of it. It, it is a quite a large uh, global company, uh, but we do a lot of kind of subsystems and subcomponents that go into end users. Um, and we're solving the world's greatest engineering challenges. We focus on pretty much anything to do with motion and control. So uh, our portfolio is broken up into six different technology groups that you can see there. Uh, we have a lot of different offerings uh, across the entire uh, country here, but also across the globe that we support uh, many, many customers. So lots of different indus industries that we support. Um, our brand promise, as I said, we're the global leader in motion and control technologies, partnering with its customers to increase their productivity and profitability. So what does that mean for us here in Manitowoc? So that's that's great at a high level and a, and a large scale. Um, these are some of the components and things that we make uh, in Manitowoc or the business that we support. So uh, we do high pressurized hydraulic fittings. Uh, we're a metal production facility, so we're doing a lot of assembly uh, coatings and, and plating. Uh, we'll do some different uh, metal turning and metal cutting, some forming operations, um, really anything to do with kind of the end configuration on a hydraulic hose assembly. So these are some different offerings that we have throughout the division, um, some of our competencies. Uh, and then our customer base is really, really diverse. So you may, again, may not have heard of Parker Hannafin or know exactly what we make or really where do uh, metal couplings and hydraulic assemblies and things go. Uh, but you can see some of the, the customers that we have, uh, some kind of right in the back door of, of um, Manitowoc here in, in Northeast Wisconsin with Oshkosh and uh, even uh, CNH uh, down in uh, Miller St. Asians. They're a good customer of ours as well as well as some other customers that you, you can certainly see there. So um, again, we support uh, just about everyone. So um, a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in Ohio. I went to school for aerospace engineering. Um, and during my, my time at college, I realized that I really enjoyed more of the people and some of the manufacturing processes rather than design. Um, so I shifted my focus uh, from aerospace and, and really got more into the manufacturing side, knowing that 
I wanted to be involved with people and processes and solving complex problems. So um, I was uh, lucky enough after I graduated uh, college to get a job right here in Manitowoc as a process engineer. Um, but as I said, I really enjoyed uh, people and, and leadership. So I was able to get into a supervision position and I got to be a part of the, an operations team uh, that was using my technical de degree to solve problems, but still supporting uh, innovation, supporting people, uh, which, which I think is just fantastic uh, on the customers that we support, the products that we make. It's still all about the people that are here. So it's really fun uh, to integrate that and, and teams into how to make our, our end fittings and, and what we do here. So I did that for a little bit. I spent some time as a uh, materials manager uh, and then I went back into operations. I moved down to uh, Davenport, Iowa as the plant manager down there. We were directly supporting some of our larger OEMs like Caterpillar, John Deere, uh, Terex and Genie, some of those customers, CNH. We were making the end hydraulic uh, hose assemblies. And then I came back up here in 2013. So I've been with Parker for um, almost 14 years now. And uh, I've had a lot of time uh, here in the plants in Manitowoc. Um, and I've been the, uh, the plant manager up here since 2013. So I've enjoyed uh, getting to know and getting to see a lot of what we're able to do and a lot of our customers. And I've worked with Kyle uh, a couple of times over, over many years. So excited to, to hear from him. So I will let him take over. And Kyle, you just let me know when you want me to go to the, the next slide. Sure, sure. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, my name is Kyle Weedmeyer. I'm the engineering manager here at the facility. Been a Parker Hannifin for 20 years. Um, I guess similar to Kyle, I'm not native to the area. I actually grew up in southeastern Michigan. Uh, I got an engineering degree from Michigan State University. And uh, right after college, I took another job, but then I was fortunate enough to start with Parker in 2000 um, in, in, the, in the Mason, Michigan facility as a process engineer, became a senior process engineer, and then transferred here to Manitowoc as the engineering manager in 2008. I was here for about five, five years, and I took a, a job as a pseudo half uh, design engineer and half manufacturing engineer for another division of Parker uh, in Missouri, a Sporland division. I just came back here actually this summer as an engineering manager and um, I also have some divisional responsibilities as project managers. So all in all, 20 years, four different facilities actually. So uh, part of the role here, um, you know, we've got two apprentices already in engineering um, in, from the Manitowoc areas. Um, we also have five engineers on site. We have some process engineers uh, we have manufacturing engineers and we have an automation department. Um, we get involved with coding, prototypes, um, project management is obviously a big part of what we do as well. So um, we get involved with our, with our design engineering, which is actually based out of the Cleveland, Ohio area. Uh, we get involved with uh, new product launches. We develop prototypes. You know, they got new designs they want to test. You know, there's always constant pressures. How do we get better, higher pressures, lower weight product, you know, or certain specific applications for low temperature, special, special fluids. So we'll, we'll do a lot of testing with that. So that's a lot, of the, a lot of the interesting things we get to do on the forefront of testing and new product stuff. We get involved in with new machinery to make this more efficiently. Um, we get involved with plant layouts, how to best lay out the plant uh, efficiency wise. And then um, get, get, along, well, get involved very, very much with how to lay out the facility and those things of that nature. More of the day-to-day -day stuff, uh, there's a lot of tool design to a new part number, a new chain, a new process improvement. Um, we work a lot, you know, just with the operators on the floor. How do we interact and, and make their job easier? Because ultimately they're the ones that are making money for this facility. So can we change a tool? Can we improve a process, improve the quality, things of that nature? Um, so a lot of problem solving, a lot of assisting of operators, a lot of tool design, day-to-day -day improvements. Um, kind of funding to the next slide if you would. So just a couple, couple examples of, of what we're doing there. So. Um, I guess when I started the, the top left picture, so that's a newer machine that I guess we got involved with, you know, it actually was made in Italy. And so we involved with how do we tool up this machine? How, what, what's the scope of what part numbers? How do we quote that process, right? How is it going to make money for us? So there's a lot of business case about, uh, about do we do this? And then once we make the decision, yes, financially, this makes sense because it's a better process of what we're doing today. Well, then how do we integrate that into the plant? How do we train operators? And so there's a lot of interactions. I would say probably most of my team is probably half on the shut floor, half in the office, just to get an understanding of the type of meetings and stuff that go on. Um, and, and moving down to the, the bottom right there, so our automation team, they, they actually, you know, as a team built that machine there with that Kuka robot in front, which bringing products to the, to the machine, we're crimping the pieces together, we're marking the part number, and then it's going down the chute there on the left. Um, there's a little small picture there on the left. 
So that starts with the three different components. And then we actually mechanically crimp those parts together, put the part number on the side and drop it down as the, fi as the final unit. So instead of, a, you know, I guess we call it the three Ds, you know, dull, dirty, or dangerous, how do we eliminate or reduce that kind of stuff that the operator has to do that and continually improve that for the operators? So just an example of the type of stuff that we're doing. Um, one of the, our, our current youth apprentice is working on a, a situation just like this, make it better. And then some prior people, you know, interns, co-ops, interns, are also part of these type of projects. It's the kind of stuff that we do within Parker today. So. so, yeah, hopefully that's some good insight into a little bit of what we do here uh, at uh, Parker Hannafin and Manitowoc. And, and just to, to kind of close out uh, before we maybe open it up to any questions that we have, um, you know, we, we have about a 260,000 square foot facility um, right now, we have about 270 uh, full-time associates here, uh, but very quickly trying to ramp up to about 325. So we have a lot of new positions that we have open. Uh, business is, is pretty strong, as, as Eric talked about. There's always that need for new people to come in, uh, constantly filling the, uh, the pipeline there. And uh, right now, we're shipping, um, we're shipping about 120,000 uh, pieces a day. So we do make uh, quite a bit of product. Um, across all the different uh, types of operations in the facility. So we keep Kyle and his engineering team very busy, lots of new projects and uh, lots of opportunities and, and things to, to maintain and keep up with. But uh, it's, a, it's an exciting time, constantly innovating and changing. Um, this plant has gone through a lot of changes over the years. So that's, that's one aspect of Parker that I've always enjoyed and appreciated the amount of challenges that we have uh, and then the people that support those. So. Great, thanks. Um, maybe one thing before we open up for questions that you guys can talk about. I know there's a lot of variety of careers in manufacturing. So maybe touch upon the welding to the individual that's responsible for the logistics and the shipping, as you talked about shipping out 120,000 pieces a day. Somebody has to be um, working in those areas as well. Um, maintenance, what happens when the machines aren't working the way they should be? So if you guys can talk a little bit more about some of the other career areas, that would be great. Sure. Hey, thank you, Terry. Sure, I can go first. Go uh, it, it's been said in the past, um, for each production employee out on the floor, you probably have six to eight people supporting that, that, that position. When you talk about manufacturing, you're not just producing products, but you may be in a customer service role, talking to customers, expediting orders, um, raw material, purchasing managers, commodity managers, a lot of critical thinking skills, uh, a lot of analyzing trends, uh, working as a buyer. Uh, you've got a quality manager position that's dealing with, uh, dealing with customers and, and, and quality issues, uh, ISO standards, um, all the way through to assembly techs, uh, supervisors, team leaders, um, uh, setup operator, machinist, uh, automatic screw machine operators, maintenance, assembly. Um, there's a ton of different opportunities within manufacturing. One of the great things that is about all these local companies is there's opportunities to grow and learn. Uh, one of the some of the some of the traits that we would look for if we were going to hire any uh, young men and women coming into the coming into our facility is your attendance record. Can you show up every day? Do you have a positive attitude? Uh, those are very important employability skills. Also, looking at your transcripts, your math, your science, STEM, um, some of the um, some of the tech ed classes. Uh, are you are you willing to be able to get get hands on, learn, and and, and, and certainly earn and apply yourself? Uh, manufacturing is changing; it's, it's evolving uh, on a daily, a weekly, daily, and, and yearly basis, and. You have to be able to adapt and change and modernize and, and rethink your, your processes and also be, be, be willing to, to, uh, to flex to uh, different roles. Uh, the old days of coming in and working for a company for 45 years, those days are, are probably past. Companies have to keep reinventing themselves, reinventing the product lines and, and, and processes. And the, the great thing about that is it provides opportunities. Um, some of the jobs that have gone, sometimes manufacturing gets a, a, a bad rap, uh, jobs that maybe go over, over, overseas to China and, and, and so on. 
the type of opportunities that, that our uh, companies are involved with are high tech and they are they are journey worker journeyman type positions and they are skilled trade positions so whether it's in the engineering uh, four-year pathway two-year pathway out at LTC whether it's in apprenticeship programs um, all these different opportunities that are there for our um, upcoming high school graduates um, either after high school or in the youth apprenticeship program uh, these are, are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we didn't really get into wages and, and, and benefits and, and so on, but as a general swag, if you're going to go into entry-level general production-type jobs, you're probably, depending on the facility, union, non-union, small versus large, you're probably in the 12 to $15 per hour, and then you start to get into some of the trades, some of the skill set areas. If you're going into welding, machining, maintenance, you know, you can be anywhere from 20 to $40 per hour, depending on on what you bring to the to the table. Um, and you can go and, and take a four-year degree pathway, which is good. But you want to, if you're going to go that route, you want to have a, a, a career pathway narrowed down. So after you've made that big investment, you can also ultimately see that return. Um, some of the all of our trade areas. The great thing about it is that you, you come out with a, with a two-year or four-year um, youth apprenticeship, registered apprenticeship, and you don't have a dime of debt. So you're learning as you go. You're building that skill set. You're, you're becoming that journey worker. And you, no one can ever take those skills away from you. Kyle or Kyle, anything else you want to add on that regard? No, I'll add a couple of things real quick. Eric did a great job explaining just the, the lots of different opportunities within manufacturing. And as, as Carrie stated, um, you know, there are a lot of different areas uh, within our facility and things that, that we support. So um, if you like uh, technical uh, problem solving, then machining would be a good op opportunity for you or getting into a maintenance position where we have um, electromechanical associates. We have automation technicians who are working on more uh, robotics and, and machine building and uh, designing some of those things, trying to solve and fix problems. Uh, we have uh, mechanics and fabricators in the facility here that, that help solve problems. Uh, and we have shipping, we have assembly, we've got uh, plating positions and, and parts washing, uh, attending positions, lots of different opportunities and lots of different things that we can do in the facility here to get into other areas. Uh, we've had several people that have gone from um, just working in a, a general assembly or some sort of a specific uh, skilled assembly position and have gone back to school and are in a leadership position and, and going back to school to get maybe a supervision uh, uh, position or a degree there, um, going back to school to become a, a buyer or planner into our production control department. So um, several different opportunities, several, several different career paths. Uh, as, as Eric said, there's lots of opportunities to um, have the company pay for those and, and gaining some good experience to be able to do those things. Um, I would say one of the most important things that we look at is um, we want everyone to be a part of a team and be problem solvers. So that doesn't matter if you're, you're really good with your hands or are really good with math and technical ability or not. Maybe you just really enjoy um, getting to see things and getting to, to kind of put stuff together or um, work well with other people. Uh, there's lots of opportunities to do that. Uh, manufacturing is not a dirty environment. It's not a, an environment where you go home every night and you just have, have worked yourself to death. It's a position that we want people to work smarter uh, rather than harder and to make sure that uh, we're being a part of something uh, even, even bigger than what we're doing to try to take care of our customers. So lots of opportunities there. Kyle, anything to add? You know, I think you hit it pretty good. Um, certainly, just, just the big area you just said, you know, how do you make the job easier for, for anyone, whether it's yourself or, or that? If it's easier, it's automatically faster. Um, you know, some of the other things that we, you know, talked a lot about, we do industrial electricians, we've got tool makers, we've got millwright positions. Yeah, we, we've got very, we got a lot of hands-on apprentice type opportunities that we do and, and a lot of other people in the area do as well. So certainly, you know, the sky's the limit of where you guys want to go. Just, you know, what are you guys interested in? And what, what's your guys' passion? Because if it's your passion, then you're going to want to do it. So I guess the more you can understand that and understand what your options are, 
that's what I would, you know, recommend you guys going forward with. Great, thank you. I'll open it up for questions. They're just, just just deciding if they have any questions or not. They're looking. They have to write a reflection on this, so they're looking to make sure all their things were answered on their reflection. Well, uh, well one question was, what does what does it mean that it's not a dirty environment? Which I think is a great question because that means maybe some of the stigma has already um, been been put to rest. Um, but does anybody want to speak to how clean your manufacturing facilities are? Uh, we have uh, pretty much everything in the plant painted uh, white or a light gray color. So we have, have bright lights, the ceilings painted white, uh, floors are, are gray, they're epoxy coated flooring, uh, walls are white. We painted a lot of the machines um, a white or kind of a, a cream color. Um, and we do that to maintain good aesthetics. Uh, it's brighter, it's cleaner, it's a better place to work, it's a good environment, positive environment, but it also helps us identify uh, machine leaks and problems and be able to see those a lot better. Um, so yeah, we, we have a very clean facility. Uh, we also want a facility that's open that you can see through. Visual indicators are a big part of what we do within lean manufacturing and within Parker. So the more that you can kind of look out and be able to see the, the shop floor and where uh, parts are moving or not moving, um, that's, that's a big deal. We want to make sure that that parts are always flowing through the plant. So we, we try not to have uh, things kind of walled off. It's kind of an open environment where you can see equipment, you can see people, uh, and you can see product flow. So um, yeah, it's, it's uh, as, as Kyle showed in, um, in those pictures there, you know, that equipment is bright. It's easy to see. It's not, you know, dark and covered in, in uh, grime and, and, uh, oil and, and just dingy. It's, it's something that we want everybody to, to come in. Um, you're typically not going to leave coated in oil or just, just you know, you're, you're going to come in. We want you to have uh, clothes that are in good conditions too. So um, yeah, it's, that's really what I would say most manufacturing companies have either gone to or are going to. It's not, uh, it, it certainly is not a, a dark and dirty environment anymore. And uh, as, as Kyle alluded to, the emphasis on safety is it's very very important um you know team safety committees safety teams uh, along with not only improving the manufacturing processes but everything throughout the facility so most facilities out there are, are clean they're well lit they are modern um, some of the new cnc um, cells that we have some of the uh, the combination mill turn uh, five axis machines they're over one million dollars so you have a journey worker working on that machine and what they're responsible for, uh, there's a huge investment not only in the processes and the equipment, but also the people and the facility. So safety is, is ultimately number one in, um, it's not a foundry type environment, it's not dark, it's not dirty, it's not dingy, um, it, it's, and it's, and it's constantly being improved. So you mentioned a couple of things about the safety. You mentioned um, a lot about how individuals work themselves up from one position. What is a really good, so let's say we have a student who's not, I don't know if I wanna be a machinist. I'm interested in a little bit in welding. Maybe I wanna do engineering. Um, I really like the automation and robotics. What's a good starting point that you recommend to somebody coming in the door who maybe isn't ready to invest in the schooling side but can grow internally in both of your organizations? Yeah, I would suggest anybody to come in and just a general manufacturing position is, is really, really good. Um, we, we've had a few people that maybe have known what they want to do. So they come into the youth apprenticeship program, maybe do a maintenance position uh, and they like it. We've had some that have, have done maintenance and realize that that's not for them. And that's fine. That's, that's totally okay. Uh, we have some other ones that have come through a youth apprenticeship and just apprenticeship position in just a general uh, production and manufacturing environment uh, to learn a little bit about what it is. Uh, the, the former plant manager here, he started uh, in our plating department. Um, he became a, um, a machinist 
who went into uh, manufacturing supervision and maintenance supervision, and then he became uh, a plant manager. So he, and now he's in charge of, I think, six or seven different plants at a division level. So he's, you know, really progressed and, and grown in his career. Um, and Parker's pretty much paid for most of that too, which is, which is a great thing that Eric talked about earlier. So um, come in and get involved. When we hire new people in, in any level of the organization, we have them all work out um, on the manufacturing floor with the operators to learn what, what it is that we do. Uh, whether you're supervising people or an engineer or um, even an HR person, we want you to get out and understand what we do and how we do it. So you understand some of the challenges, some of the successes and, and just what it is that we do every day. So I would encourage anyone to get involved with that. Um, and then there's, there's always opportunities. If you don't like something that you're doing, you can go to a different department and try something else. And, and we certainly have it. We have people that love shipping and we have people that um, you know, would never wanna be in assembly and we have vice versa. People that love machining, but wouldn't wanna do anything in, uh, into our automation area. So it just kind of depends on what your interests are and, and what your, uh, your skills are. But um, certainly there's lots of different things for you to try if, uh, if you wanna take a, a position in here, but come in and get started in any, any of the positions. I'm sure Eric would have something similar and, and then you can you know, learn about them and see what might be a good fit for you. I think Kyle hit it, uh, hit it right on the head. Uh, today, I think there's a lot more youth apprentices coming into the field or just general production uh, employees that haven't been exposed to the business side of it, haven't been exposed to the manufacturing side of it. If you don't have an aunt or an uncle or maybe a parent that work in a given skill set area, you, don't, you may not know that it actually exists. So it's very typical today and it's something that we see more and more with, with new YAs and with new people just in, in the general is to provide that opportunity to be able to see a lot of different occupations, a lot of different skill sets. And you're in a, you guys as 10th graders are in a great, great time in your high school careers to steer the next one to two years and, 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 and beyond that to see what you want to do and explore. That's what the YA program in, in some of our areas are, are all about. Yeah, just to piggyback a little bit, yeah, certainly, I mean, the more, the more you take initiative, the more you try things, the more you experience, the more you know what you like and what you don't like. Um, we have a maintenance YA right now, I think it's her second year, and she's asked more questions. So she's, done, she's been more and more exposed to the maintenance side of it. Well, she was asking me about the engineering things as well. And so, so we paired her up with uh, engineers for, I think like six weeks or something. She spent a day the last six weeks, working with different people and different projects. And this fall, she's going to go to engineering school. So whatever you like, it's all out there. And, and the more, more you know, you're interested, the more, more you can be exposed to. So don't be afraid to ask questions. And, you know, once you get in the door too, because, you know, just more eagerness, the more questions, the more we can answer those questions. And the more, more you're interested, the more they'll, they'll steer you down a certain path, you know, towards your interest. I know we didn't touch on it too much, but as far as, general careers within manufacturing, and as a full-time employee uh, for anybody looking at getting into it, you know, a comprehensive benefit package, uh, 401k, uh, retirement savings plans, paid vacation, paid time off, uh, health insurance. There's a, a lot of things that you don't think about maybe as a high school student, but once you graduate, if you get married, you have a family, uh, or just this, this stability aspect of it, um, there's a lot of fringe benefits that add up to real dollars in your, in your total compensation. Great. Other questions? Over here. None there? Okay. I guess I would just finish up um, first by thanking our students um, for watching today, thanking our speakers, uh, Kyle, Kyle and Eric for their time today. Greatly appreciated, appreciate the chamber um, doing these sessions. Uh, even given COVID, we're still committed to getting that interest out to our students so you can learn more about the great opportunities in manufacturing. Um, one thing I just wanna point out in regard to youth apprenticeship, we have both males and females in manufacturing. And sometimes I think uh, the belief is that it's a very male career and it is not. So um, as Kyle mentioned, we have a student, uh, 
she is in her second year in industrial maintenance, now looking at going to engineering after her experience with Parker. We have a female welder who's in her second year at Aaron's company. Um, so we've had many females, we've had many males go through the program, um, but it is not a one or the other. So again, great opportunities are in the manufacturing areas and we do offer a youth apprenticeship for the engineering, the IT area, production, machining, industrial maintenance and the welding, um, all those opportunities available at LDI and Parker and many other companies locally. So I thank you guys for both participating in the YA program, participating today as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you.